this evening with Sir Arthur Greve Streetly. No, no, you're not. What? I say, uh, no, you're not. You see, you're talking to Sir Arthur Streeb Greebly. You're confusing me, I'm afraid, with Sir Arthur Greeb Streebly. You see, the T is silent, as in the word fox. Good evening. I'm uh, sorry, Sir Arthur. Uh, Sir Arthur is going to tell us about his rather unique restaurant, the Frog and Peach. Well, the uh, ideal opportunity, really. I mean, what with me being here, you being there. The ideal opportunity to discuss the Frog and Peach. Seize it! Yes, uh, I will. Uh, if you would tell us something about the Frog and Peach, Sir Arthur, um, how did the idea come to you? you? Well, the idea for the Frog and Peach came to me in the bar. A lot of things come to me in the bath, particularly uh, small mosquitoes, various forms of water snake. But on this particular evening, a rather unique and I thought a stunning idea. Now I said to myself, I said, this is what I said, I said, where can a couple go? Not having too much money, uh, feeling a bit hungry, a bit peckish, wanting something to eat. Oh, where can they go? Where can they go and get a really big frog and a damn fine peach? And of course, the answer came there none. And it was on this premise that I founded the Frog and Peach. On these premises? On these precise premises, yes. How long ago did you start this venture? Tricky to say. Uh... Certainly within living memory. Oh, yes, yes. It was shortly after World War II. You remember that, don't you? Ghastly business, World War II. Ghastly business. I was against the whole thing. Yes, I, I think we all were. Yes, but I wrote a letter. Uh, getting back to the Frog and Peach, uh, how has business been? Well, let me answer that in two parts, you see. Uh, business hasn't been, and there uh, hasn't been any business. <laughs> you know, we've run into some lean times these past, what, 35 years at the old F&P. <laughs> well, Sir Arthur, do you think you're at a disadvantage being situated in the middle of a bog in the heart of the Yorkshire Moors? Yes. I think that being situated in the middle of a bog in the heart of the Yorkshire Moors could be considered quite a disadvantage. But I thought, rightly or wrongly, possibly both, that what this country was crying out for was a restaurant without a parking problem. And being situated in the middle of a bog in the heart of the Yorkshire Moors, there's no trouble parking your car. A little difficulty extricating it, but the parking is a sheer joy. Do you also feel you're at a disadvantage with regards to your menu? Oh yes. This has been a terrible disadvantage to us. Have you seen it? Briefly. Well, uh, that's the only way you can see it really. Uh, in fact, there's really only two menu items to choose from. But what are they? Ah, yeah. You'd think I'd remember after 35 years. Oh, oh, oh yes. Um, first, we have frog a la pêche. Now, frog a la pêche is basically a, a large frog brought to your table, covered in a boiling Cointreau, with a uh, peach uh, stuck in its mouth. It's really one of the most uh, disgusting sights you've ever seen. And of course, you know, the only alternative to frog a la pêche really is even worse, pêche a la frog. See, in this case, a peach is brought to your table by a waiter, again, covered in this boiling Cointreau. The waiter, very often, uh, very often the waiter is also covered in boiling Cointreau. You see, our policy really, policy here, is to aim the Cointreau at the peach. The peach is then sliced down the middle to reveal, oh God, about 300 
squiggling black tadpoles. It is truly one of the most nauseating things you'd ever care to look at. It's enough to put you off your food, which is rather good considering what the food is. <laughs> who, who does your cooking? Oh, my wife. My wife does all the cooking and luckily all the eating as well. And she's not a well woman. She's not a well woman. Oh, no. She's not a well woman at all. And in fact, she very much resents having to go down the well every morning to feed the frogs. We have to lower her. Screaming on a rope. Ah, she yells. And the frogs don't like it either. No. The frogs don't like it at all. How did you meet your wife? Well, I met Morog under somewhat unusual circumstances. It was during World War II. You remember that thing I tried to stop. She came flying through the window on this piece of shrapnel, became embedded in the sofa, and of course, one thing led to her mother, and we were married the next day. Her mother is a very powerful woman. She can break a swan's wing at 20 paces with the blow of her nose. But kids love it at parties. Getting back to the frog and peach, uh, the whole venture of the frog and peach sounds, well, rather disastrous. Disastrous? No, no, I, I, I don't think I'd use a word like disastrous here. I think the word um, uh, catastrophic is really closer to the mark. The whole venture of the Frog and Peach has been a huge failure and a terrible catastrophe. Do you think you've learned from your mistakes? <laughs> well, I've learned from my mistakes. I believe I could repeat them exactly. We've been talking to Sir Arthur Greve Streebling. Streep Greebling.